whoa, 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 whoa. Is it going, everybody? How's it going? Bigfoot's Boggarts. Look where I am. Back in the lovely Lake District. I'm down by my beloved Oldswater Lake. It's first March today. So we're almost at the end of winter. And I'm here for a two day camp. Uh, so we have with that. we we'll back for a bit. My original plans for today have changed quite drastically. I'm not going to go down break my ankle. <laughs> yeah, originally I was going to hike some of the Cumbria away today and camp along uh, that, that way. But I'm down by Old Water Lake, as you've seen, uh, for a night tonight. Uh, it's about, about 20 past four. So I've got about an hour and a half light left until it starts going dark. Uh, so yeah, I'm just hiking in to my pitch where I've been a few times before. Uh, so yeah, if you want to stick around and see how this latest adventure pans out, please do. All pitched up now. There she is. Just uh, let me uh, might get some air in, clear bed, whatever you call it. That were a bit of a race against the time, them bigs and bogs. See that dense cloud behind me? That just sweeped through here, and I just had enough time to get it coming in this direction, and I just had enough time to get the tent up, chuck everything in quickly. And wait for it to pass because uh, it's been like that all day the weather's been so changeable like you can see now on that side it's nice and clear but over there kirkstorm it's gone it's just disappeared vanished but uh, yeah been a bit of a dodgy day today i mean it's been a great day i've had a quality time out with my dad mooching about in the uh, ayers garden center and I had a phenomenal chicken goose on lunch it was wonderful uh, it had this um, sriracha mayo, sriracha mayo, chef's kiss uh, for your chips and your chicken goujons and it had uh, barbecue flavoured uh, baked beans, it was just wonderful. <laughs> Makes me question why I forage food in the wild when I'm eating shit like that, it was lovely. And then we went to uh, Keswick, because that's where I was going to go today, I was going to pick up the Cumbria way that goes through Keswick. And then other side of it, uh, I wanted to originally up Cat Bells, but that is what it looked like all the way around the Cat Bells. And Cat Bells are pretty fucking high, I'll put it that way. And I just, with me and me wild camping, I know I've done some daft things in the past, but you, you always say when you're wild camping, listen to your gut. And my gut was saying, I don't know if this is a good idea, you know. Had it been summer and I had more light, I probably would have gone up and camped up there today uh, and then the plan was to come down from there tomorrow and hike through to Grassmere camp at Rydal Lake where I've been before and then Friday I'm meeting my dad in Windermere but plans have changed and I'm here at Ullswater Lake which is a place I'm very familiar with I feel safe here, I feel relaxed you know and I know my way back to relative civilization later you know tomorrow because I've done this hike before uh, and that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to get out and just camp and do some proper good hiking. You know, and again, because I weren't hundred percent sure where I were going. You know, with cat bells and this, this hike through wild country. I'll, we'll do some map time later, and then I can show you all. I weren't really hundred percent sure about it. Hundred percent sure about it, but I would have done it. I would have found it. 
but because light i haven't got that much light today we're still in winter you know it is lighter than when i last came out it's getting lighter every day but we're up to about six o'clock now where it's dark half six it's pitch black compared to like prior camps where it's been five o'clock half four etc etc we're getting there saw the first lambs today as well when we were driving in to the lake so that's always a good promising sign that we're getting near to spring anyway i've rabbited on here rabbited on here mate uh looks like somebody in white lake as well shout out wherever you are you know where? yeah <laughs> see you in a bit so i'm just uh chilling down by uh Old water lake it's about half five so got about half an hour to rustle up some firewood uh make a little makeshift fire pit. i should have enough time left i was saying to my dad um you know i can't weigh in it's this weary eh? yeah that yeah i was saying to my dad on drive in like it looks so different you know now that there's no green because I've, I've always camped here when there has been green it's really strange coming in winter and seeing how bare it is but it should make foraging for firewood a lot easier um but yeah i love chilling down by this lake and having a bit of mindfulness time and just <sighs> zenning with mother nature because i have to admit like today like obviously it's been a bit of a hectic day and i'll, I'll probably feel a lot better when i get my fire going and i'm chilling out and you know wild camping but my anxiety when it comes to camping it's it's like when i went to Roddlesworth last week i said you know i felt some sort of presence while i were in there and i think it will link more to my anxiety because i've not been out for a while and you know there were a lad who tragically passed away uh, up in highlands um uh, two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago and he was wild camping and he weren't much older than me he were only in his early 30s and uh, yeah they reckon he died from possible overexposure and you know, when I've been at work and I'm telling them about the wild camping, like, why are you wild camping in winter? It's stupid, it's silly. You know, and I have to admit, you know, like, I know it's like because my co workers care about me, for example, you know, and, but like today, like, you know, if I'd have been in a more gun haul mind space, I'd have just gone for that, you know, the, the original plan. But I suppose hindsight's, it can be a good thing sometimes because I could have been up them mountains and you know obviously we can see Kirkstone it's just caked in cloud and I've done that before but you know I was saying to my dad when I was getting cold feet about it it's one thing going up it in clear weather and then the cloud coming down because then you're there you know what I mean you've got to stay put and you know ride it out till first light but hiking up it in cloud is it would have been a very silly thing to do I reckon you know, because I don't have uh, hiking poles or anything like that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to just work through this anxiety I've suddenly encountered in the wild camping. Um, I mean, I, by the minute, like, I can feel my mood and my anxiety lowering. But all day I've been worked up, you know, while I've been out with Dad. And I've had a great time with my Dad, it's nothing to do with that. But I just... I feel better when I'm here, you know, and I'm doing it, and, you know, that initial build-up to it, it does get me quite anxious, um, and that's, me, that's real talk, that, um, it is what it is, you know, I'm not like, you know, rabbit on about it much longer, because I need to crack on and start gathering wood up for a fire, hopefully, it's, 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 it's never so slightly drizzling, but it's, I think it's just because the weather's changeable today. Hopefully it's not going to chuck it down all night. If it does, it does. It's not the end of the world. I've got layers. I can keep warm. It's just that I love having a fire by those water lakes. It's such a beautiful place to be. <clears throat> so, plan tomorrow. I'm undecided yet. Um, but I know obviously I've got to hike over at Kirkstone again. And then I might try and hitch back to Windermere. That's work from before it passed. I might just do what I did back in summer and walk just do the full you know 13 14 mile back to Ambleside and then maybe get a bus to Windermere I might carry on back up to Rydal Lake again um I'd like I would like to camp by Windermere again 
because that's just such a beautiful place. Probably my favourite pitch ever that. Um, anyway, we'll see. I need to crack on and get some wood before it gets dark. So it's about half six nearly. Just at dusk now, visibility is pretty nil. Got me fire pit dog. Have you got enough firewood? Yes, uh, I'll look uh, That should last me approximately about two hours. And then after that, I'll resort to stumbling around in the dark looking for twigs. <laughs> uh, but while I've got you, I'm going to do a bit of map time. What should have been map time anyway. Um, what my original plans were for today. Uh, and I've done a lot of research into this. I'd even flipping pick this out. One moment, please. Oh. There's my hieroglyphic handwriting. I'd even done like step by step guides to what I was going to do. But yeah, I'm torch over here. Come here, you. Right, so this is Derwent Water. <laughs> there it is, Keswick, and that's where I were with Dad. And this red trail, you see all the way running down this map, that is the Cumbria Way. Um, and I looked at the key for the map on all like symbols and stuff like that. And these fine little dots here, that's a designated footpath, is that? And that, when it turns into blocks like that, that's like hard road <clears throat> so um i found i did a quick recce before and i got to here and when i was like looking at just the vastness of all this you know that were about 10 past four and i like i just ain't gonna have enough time because it's quite a big lake is this you know my original plan was i wanted to polish this off today and get to grange and then from there, <clears throat> hike all the way down here to Rostway. That'll be my last little sort of coffee stop for the day. <clears throat> and then all this area here, all this, this is all wild country is this. So uh, you, you follow this little beck called Langs, what's it called? Langs, Lang, Langtharth Beck. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. <clears throat> focus, focus, there you are. So you just follow this all the way down. And then when you get to Langdale itself, over that way on the other side of the map is uh, Grasmere. <clears throat> and it's about a 12 mile walk all in all. So if I could have polished off about three mile here <coughs> today, I could have made pretty good time tomorrow and got on to Rydal Lake. That was the original plan, but hey ho. Like I said, there just weren't enough hours in the day. There weren't enough daylight to make it happen. And uh, it's not end at world. You know what I mean? I were a bit good at time, but I'm by one of my favourite places in the entire world. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, that's map time for you. I'm going to start getting on with some tea soon. Though, so I'll catch you with you in a bit. So we're making my tea now. As you can see, pretty much pitch black out there now. Got some veg chili and rice. Very nice. See you in a bit. So we've got our late biggies and boggies once again. Yeah, no rain so far. Touch tent material <laughs> um yeah it's about 20 to 8 uh, i've had my tea uh, i've got like as you can see just started going on with fire now um so yeah i'm gonna ring papa bear in a little bit and then get tucked into some northern monks so i'm gonna bid you all a good evening and uh, i'll see you all tomorrow morning <clears throat> been a lovely day with dad um obviously well, a bit of indecisiveness as to what the actual plan was camping, but I'm very happy to be once again 
chilling by Old Water Lake for a while camp. So yeah, hopefully I sleep okay and uh, I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. Look at those balls of us on the wall! Still as a duck pond. Look at that, mate. Absolutely phenomenal. This is what it's all about. Make folks some boggarts. Lovely night. Survived in the wild. Good morning. Hope we're all doing all okay. This, I don't know why I said that. This will be a past tense when you've watched it. <clears throat> uh, superb sleep. I didn't even get up to over a week. Usually I do. Usually I'm bumping out tent about four ish or whatever. No, you need to go for a sleep. <laughs> it's about ten to nine. Um, I'm gonna Gonna brew up though soon, <clears throat> get some food in me and then uh, I've undecided what to do here, yeah, I don't know what to do in the day but I said I know I meet end up in Windermere by tomorrow and I can meet Paps. Uh, so I'll either go to Ride a Lake, which is what I did last year, or I might try and hitchhike and get back to Windermere because <clears throat> I'd love to camp by Lake Windermere again. Uh, so yeah, not too sure what I'm going to do yet, but first things first, get a brew go, and then get packed down and set up, so see you in a bit. Lampers. How cool is that? What a view to walk by. You know what ain't cool? Having to ring Mountain Rescue to come and get you. Things go southwards. <laughs> That's why I've stayed low for this one. Flown through Glenridding and Patterdale. Uh, I'm not too far from Kirkstone now. Been walking just under an hour and I've bashed it about three miles already. So. <clears throat> Walked past uh, all my favourite little coffee shops and things like that. And uh, you know, <laughs> brought me out to bypass them. I always love a coffee, but I was like, nope, can't afford the distractions because I've got some miles to crank out today. And uh, little distractions like that will just uh, slow me down. So, gonna, she's coming. Just around, just up that little valley there. Pain is on its way. Gonna uh, get you all. All these heavily pregnant ewes. Don't worry, girls. Your babies will be here soon. Keep going. You know, they say about <clears throat> that impending sense of doom before you have a heart attack or, I don't know, before you die, maybe. That's what I feel like when I look at the Kirkstone Pass. <laughs> Ugh, she's almost there, guys. I just wanted to show you these. Electrolyte 
tablets. Fizzy peach. I've just been kind of nibbling on them since I set off. Ooh, some of them. Anyway, I was just reading the nutritional information on back. <clears throat> it says you can take up to two every 30 minutes during the physical activity, obviously. I've been walking about an hour and a half there. Right. <laughs> I ain't had one since I left the camp, so yeah, hopefully two electrolyte tablets are gonna get me up that. What uh, this way? Get me up that Kirk Stone Pass. But yeah, it, in all fairness, I'm making quite a good time. It's it's only just about twelve o'clock, uh, and obviously I'm almost at Kirk Stone, which is you now once I get over that. It's pretty much doubtful that it literally is downhill into Ambleside. But the bulk of the work is done. You know, right? I've polished off about five and a half miles so far. Uh, look at all these here. Look at all these glampers. Glamper, glamper, glamper. You can't do the alpha shit. Ooh, oh well, can't do the alpha shit bits and bugs. I do. I can't be a wild man. Not on a campsite. <laughs> but yeah, I'm making good time. Uh, just shy of 12 o'clock now. I've done about five and a half mile. <clears throat> and obviously, this time I learned from my mistake. Look at that, bigs and bugs. You can actually see the ocean. Very faint and old wind turbines. That just goes to show you how high up the Kirkstone Pass is. Uh, beating it once again. Oh, I tell you what though. I mean, for a start, is the pub shut. Tragic. What the actual hell. <laughs> It's out of season though. I was actually gonna sit on one of these benches and open up the camera with the bloody earth. But I'm just gonna fucking crack on. Crack on there to Amble side and try and get a bus to uh Vindermere. So we'll see what we can do. But man, the Kirkstall Pass is a cruel, cruel mistress. Man, that fourth quarter. I was struggling, really struggling there. I went a bit like hazy, I was like, whoa, you know, like, <laughs> but I've not really, I've not out to, I've not had anything to eat since 10 o'clock this morning. And I had an apple banana and like a protein boy thing, flap jacket, quite nice actually. Uh, and I've just been, I've just been uh, sucking on my electrolyte tablets for last, uh, two hours but yeah that's what I was trying to say my water for when I got to the top uh, it's like retreat but that, like I said that fourth quarter I was nearly I was nearly wiped off mate <laughs> it's dicey because that final quarter there's all I know when I'm near because obviously I've done this I've done Kirkstone before when you're near the top there's all these Lovely little pools which should just just have my name written all over them for a wild swim in summer. But I was looking at him and I was like, getting more and more thirsty, more and more delirious, and I was like, mate, I'm gonna have to tap out here and uh, uh, have a drink. So I polished up the water from last night, 
and then I've refilled my bottle up with some running stream water and honestly it's due to look at it it just looks like tap water so yeah anyway I need to oh like I said before it's all pretty much just uh now I've done the hard bit, it's all quite literally downhill there to Ambleside, so I us need to shut up and crack on and uh, yeah, catch him with you in a little bit. Hey, hi Dad, who's your favourites? Look at you. Alright, gorgeous. On that arm is the Dean Brown House, built in 1774. Up behind another house with a with family for some 220 years. It's now owned by a local businessman. here now down by lovely lake windermere it's about half five and these are my favorite kind of wild camps where i can just mooch about all day and get to my pitch real late set up getting my tents going dark get the fire going and chill out then because obviously i've, I've cranked out some miles today big some bogs i know it was at a 12 mile from Bulls water down to Ambleside, but even just from beyond that, like, you know, I've come back along Main Road and I've mooched around uh, Bowness for a little bit, so I've done some leg work today and I feel I feel fantastic for it. Uh, only problem is, this isn't my actual pitch, it's a bit further along, but there's a guy there who's fishing, and so I don't want to disturb him. I might just go and have a word with him and say, like, yeah, leg wham, mate, how long are you going to be here for? I need to get the tent up. But if he's not clear enough, I'll just pitch it here. Uh, it looked different when I was walking in again. I know I keep going back to that. It looked different because there's no leaves on trees. But the I think it's high tide. Because um, the shoreline along everywhere, along this little riverbank, it, it seems a bit... I remember it back in summer being a bit further out. I think it might be high tide, so it's probably not a bad idea actually camping here. Just, you know, I don't want to get washed away by the, uh, by the lake. <laughs> right, I'm going to go have a word with that guy, see when he's clearing off. See you in a bit. She's late again. She were a shy one tonight. Let's put all sorts of nonsense on there to get that flame going. But I think we've finally got it. Such tent material. Uh, see, when I was scavenging wood before, it's all like driftwood. And it was, you know, hollow, dries out. And I was like, buzzing, this should be great to burn. But it took ages to get it going. But yeah, I think she's going now, isn't she? That looks of it. So that's it for today. Um, it's about 20 to 8 I'm going to sign off now and love you and leave you off with tomorrow morning um, and yeah it's been a superb day today I'm tired obviously from what walking I've done 
which is to be expected, but I feel very, very, you know, like the effort was worth it. So this is my reward now. I'm going to chill out and watch this at night. So, yeah, like I said, I'll bid you all adieu. And I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. <clears throat> hey y'all, welcome back to another successful night at Campfire Stories Lancashire, where I've yet again traversed the wild country and survived the night in the outback. Now, bigs and bugs, I think I procured myself a little onlooker. Uh oh. I think it's River Patrol. They've been circling my little campsite for the last hour. And you know what? I think they're a bunch of chicken shits because if they're gonna be like that, I'd rather them just come up to me and be like, excuse me, mister, we need you to move on now. But no, instead, they want to be intimidatory and just float around like a bunch of pillocks. But as you can see, once again, leave no trace. You would not believe that was my home for the night. <laughs> That's where I was, right there, Bigfoot's and Boggarts. And if there's three things that I know about in life, it's snakes, Bigfoot and wild camping. I know how to wild camp responsibly. I know how to tidy my fire pit out. As you can see, it has gone. Again, leave no trace. My campsite has now been packed away and I've left I've left no mess for River Patrol to moan about. And that's all I've got to say about that. Now I gotta go and give my girlfriend Hannah Montana a phone call. And go meet Pa at the restaurant where I'm going to have myself a nice Italian pepperoni pizza. So, see you further on down the road. Bye-bye.